Greetings from the Hulk Room. My goal for 2016 is to try to review every new movie, video game, and comic book I read, watch, or play throughout the year. So without further ado, I shall start on the new comic books for the week. My very first one is The Totally Awesome Hulk number two. Yes, as you can tell by my intro to uh, this video and just looking at my background, I am a huge fan of The Incredible Hulk, which pains me to say that this was almost the first time in my entire comic book collecting life that I almost did not pick up the new issue of The Hulk. The main reason for this is because, well, the Hulk's not the Hulk. It's not Bruce Banner right now in the comic book title, the Hulk, the totally awesome Hulk. Totally awesome! So, I mean, there's been much really, really bad Hulk runs before. Uh, Jason Aaron's recent one was terrible. Bruce Jones had an awful run. So, so far, that's only on the second issue. It hasn't been, this totally awesome version of Hulk has not been that bad, but it's just, it's not Hulk. It's part of Marvel's Oh, Marvel's been trying to redo all their main characters. Uh, Captain America is now Falcon. Falcon has taken up the mantle of Captain America. Thor is now a woman. Uh, Wolverine's a woman as well. And the totally awesome Hulk is an Asian teenager. Which is, it's cool to try to have diversity, but it's still, it's not Hulk. Plus, the Hulk is, the reason I love Hulk is he's a savage monster in this version of him, the that this uh, Amadas Chow, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name, turns into is very, he's a teenager and he's very jokey and laughing and happy to be Hulk and that's just not Hulk at all to me. Bruce Banner, sulking, sad, running from the government, that's the Hulk and this, he turns into a savage monster, not a happy thing. But, so my almost gave up on this series, but it's my goal to try to collect every issue of the Hulk ever. So, I still picked it up, and it's really not a bad comic book. This issue, the artwork is very good, very good. Uh, Hulk is, looks, uh, the totally awesome Hulk anyways, looks very cool in this, and the uh, artist can do a very good job on all the characters, but... That That is one good thing about it, and there still was a tiny bit of Bruce Banner because they're still going into the mystery of why Bruce Banner isn't the Hulk anymore. So it was, it was a fine issue. There's decent action. There has this character that's collecting the monsters from Earth and it's going to take them back to uh, her home planet and so they can live freely because I guess they don't fear monsters on her home planet, which... We'll see if that's actually the truth or she's collecting them for nefarious reasons. But overall, it wasn't a bad issue. Nothing much happened. I did like the part where uh, he beca the, the totally awesome Hulk became more old school Hulk. He, uh, when he's fearing his sister might be uh, killed, he started turning more savage. Which We'll see as it goes on if he becomes more like Hulk. But I don't know. Change is not a bad thing. I just just not the Hulk. It's not the Hulks. But overall, not bad, so I'll give it a 3 out of 5. Next up, Spider-Man and Deadpool number 1. Now, Hulk is my favorite, obviously, but Deadpool is probably my third favorite superhero under uh, Batman, Hulk and Batman. Just because I love his sense of humor. He's just been a very fun character to read. I'm very excited for the new movie starring Ryan Reynolds. But, uh, I don't want to sound like some hipster or something, but I was a fan of Deadpool before Deadpool's cool to love. Like, everyone loves Deadpool everywhere now. Which is, it's a good thing. I like seeing my character everywhere, but it makes it a little hard to try to collect his appearances. Because beforehand, there's just, like, one Deadpool book you're lucky to see in stores a month now. Deadpool's everywhere. Right now, I believe he's got two, this is be a second ongoing series to start starring him uh, and then there's also starring an avengers book and, and plus many mini series and whatnot and a long time ago i said i'm just gonna stick with the one deadpool book i don't want to collect all the deadpools he's 
I love Deadpool, but he's not Hulk. He's not my favorite, so I'll just stick with Deadpool. But this book's... I had to give this book a try just because I love the Ed McGinnis is the artist and he's one of my favorite artists out there and Joe Kelly used to do uh, Deadpool back in the day so I want to give him a try and yeah I like I like Spider-Man a lot and I don't really like the riots currently Spider-Man so getting a one-two combo of Spider-Man Deadpool is a good is a compelling compelling argument to try the book out and I'm definitely glad I am I had I did try it out the artwork was great from Egg McGinnis, and the story of usually Spider-Man is the one annoying everyone else in any superhero team-up, but Deadpool even goes beyond Spider-Man with his humor and oddness, so he's an annoying Deadpool, uh, even Spider-Man, so it's a good, good pair of, combo pair of them, just trading one-liners back and forth as they fight bad guys, and Deadpool tries desperately to try to emulate Spider-Man, and like with the best Deadpool stories, behind his nonstop jokes there's some darkness, and there's a little, little dark, kind of dark twist at the end of this issue. So I like that. Yeah. Finally, well, um, I'll give the book. Hmm, we'll give it a four out of five. Four out of five. And my final third book, the third and final book of the week, Deadpool number five. Like I said, Marvel's putting out a lot of Deadpool books right now. This is his main story, main uh, comic book. I've been liking this uh, since they relaunched the book uh, just a couple months ago. I've been liking the storyline a lot. It's a little annoying that Deadpool is now as rich and famous as a Tony Stark. and He's even funding the Avengers like Tony Stark has in the past. Which is fine, it's a good, good, uh, it's a decent twist to the character, but they also have the same exact twist going on with Spider-Man, as well as Tony Stark still is a rich billionaire, so you have three characters in Marvel Universe that are super rich, super popular, and funny. One liner, it's like, yeah, okay, can we, maybe if we're done to change Spider-Man and Deadpool to be like that, maybe we should at least make Tony Stark poor for a change or something, just so it's not so many of pretty much the same character running around. But I digress. I do love the fact that in this book, Deadpool has, with his tons of money, has a team of Deadpools, people he's, uh, he's working for him and he's making them be other Deadpools to go on other missions, including two of my favorite D-list Marvel characters, Terror and Slapstick. And this one was the finale to the mini the storyline of this current story, the finale of this storyline, and this character that has been impersonating Deadpool and doing evil things, killing people and whatnot, and his character called Madcap, which has been around for a little bit, but I have no real knowledge of him, honestly, very little, and this storyline does make me like him a lot. I did very much enjoy this character, so I'm excited to see where he goes from here. He's pretty much an evil Deadpool. Always cool to have the evil version of the hero. It's cliche, but always fun. Cliche, it works. If don't, not broke, don't fix it. And I will give Deadpool number five a four out of five as well. Another good one. All right, well, that's it for the week. Um... Till next time, I'm Matthew signing off.